Hi, welcome to the Commoners series. Today, let us see about the Mamalaburam Summit. This is an informal summit between the leaders of India and China which took place at Mamalaburam, south of Chennai. It is followed by the first informal summit at Wuhan in 2018 between Mr. Tsai Jinping, the Chinese President and Mr. Narendra Modi, the Indian Prime Minister. These informal summits have the use of trust building activities. Let's see what happened at the Wuhan summit. After the Doklam standoff that took place in 2018, the Wuhan summit took right after that. During that summit, uh, the main aim was to reset the ties between India and China. It resulted in Wuhan spirit, which focused on uh, retriting the punch shield, which is the five principles which was signed between India and China during 1950s. Under Wuhan spirit, following were, were concluded. Both countries agreed that they form the backbone of economic globalization and they should positively contribute to the economy of the world. Secondly, they agreed to cooperate for projects in Afghanistan and they also agreed to cooperate in projects in other third countries. China has indicated that India's refusal to coordinate in Belt and Road Initiative will no longer come in the way of economic cooperation. Why Mamalaburam was chosen? Mamalaburam is India's symbolic for soft power because of its UNESCO World Heritage Site status. It is also an important town in Pallava dynasty. It is renowned for its architecture widely admired across the world. More importantly, the Buddhist monk Bodhidharma who went to China from Kanchipuram passed through this town of Mamallaburam. So this town becomes culturally significant one. Also the earliest recorded security pact between India and China was between a Pallava king who helped Chinese to counter the Tibet. Now let us see what are the issues concerning in India and China relationship. In the current geopolitical economic condition, China suffers from certain political as well as economic setbacks. While India also suffers from economic setbacks, it is relatively better positioned when compared to China. It has to be acknowledged, however, since the Wuhan summit, only little changes have been made in these two countries' relationship. Hopes raised at the Wuhan summit to work collaboratively on a project in Afghanistan is yet to be realized. Internal security concerns such as unrest in Tibet, uh, radicalist and extremist activities in Xinjiang region as well as the recent activities in Hong Kong are raising fears among the Chinese. Over the past few decades, uh, some of the historical forces have been shaping and reshaping the Sino-India relationship. Some of these forces have been pushing them towards competition while some of them have been impelling them towards collaboration as well as cooperation. Now let us see about some of the conflict areas. Uh, the conflict areas include the unresolved territorial dispute between India and China, Indian concerns over Chinese penetration into India's neighborhood like China, like Bhutan, Nepal, Bangladesh and uh, Sri Lanka and uh, India's uh, burgeoning trade deficit with China and uh, finally and most importantly Beijing's all-weather friend Pakistan. Beijing has so far historically stated that Jammu and Kashmir is a bilateral issue and uh, no other country should involve in it. But recently it has taken up the issue of Article 370 and discussed it in UN Security Council on behalf of Pakistan, which is the changed position. On the other hand, China's trade war with US has also caused the economic setback for it. US-China ties have turned hostile at a time when India has been steadily enhancing its ties with Washington. The recent upgradation of quadrilateral engagement with countries like Australia, Japan, India and uh, USA is, uh, shows the seriousness of this grouping. So both China as well as US sees India as a swing power. USA 
thinks that it could sway India towards its, its side, whereas China is not in favour of this position. China has Pakistan on its cards, which is now getting stronger as it is making inroads into Pakistan occupied Kashmir through China Pakistan Economic Corridor. India's own military development as well as its military engagement with other Indo Pacific countries is a testament to the fact that India will continue to ensure its ties with China at the same time it will continue to nurture and develop the ties with other developing as well as developed nations.